Let's see if it works. You got a notification, it sounds like we're about to go live, friend. What do you do different? I'm on my I'm on my phone instead of my laptop only because Comcast. David McWilliams, my man, he's got that Pappy Van Winkle. If any if any of my friends are your friends, Brittany Renee, lucky down. If you're wanting that Pappy Van Winkle, dear God, when if you need some Pappy Van Winkle, my buddy David McWilliams is gonna get some. I see you're on here, Mama. I didn't think you were getting on here tonight, but I appreciate everybody getting on here. Roy, I'm going to come home for breakfast tomorrow because um, i got a busy day. It's the best. Well, hey, if you want some, send Kathleen a message. David's going to buy it. I don't know what it's going to cost, but you're rich. So if you want some of it, friend, he can get you some. And he, what he's doing is he is giving it to, I guess, the highest bidder. So Kathleen uh, in my office who thinks y'all are best friends, she said, um, she said that um, y'all are best friends, by the way. So, hey, I got a question, Roy Frazier. Do you believe that the uh, our favorite breakfast place will be repaired and working by Monday morning. That looked pretty bad. Lisa, Lisa Progar, the navigator is on here. Lisa, you can probably give us some input on this. Tonight, on Straight From The Gut, I appreciate all the likes, the comments. Hey, here's what I want you to do for me tonight. Please like. Please hit the like or love or the angry face. I don't care what you put as long as you give me something. Put something. Hit the like button. Hit the love button. Hit the funny button. Hit the angry button. I don't care. Please comment. Throw some. Throw something in here. Give me something to talk about. Somebody else may say something. Please share my stream. Hey, All you got to do. I'm you are an overachiever. All you got to do is hit share to share the the stream i'm trying the the purpose of this is i want to build a bigger audience for the good time tommy brand hey keith mosley how you doing friend i just saw where you like my instagram uh picture with me and Brittany renee and grant cardone i appreciate you liking that and i appreciate anybody that would share this also if there's some person that you're thinking of that you think tonight would benefit them we're talking about happiness. We're talking about the decision to be happy. If you can think of somebody that needs to hear this, please tag them. All you got to do is like type their name in and, and tag them. Again, uh, real the real estate madman is here, David Estes. I appreciate you getting on here, buddy. All right, I've got Brittany Renee, my significant other in here. The woman who... Uh, who makes me a better man. She's in here. She's always a part of this every Thursday night. She's going to probably pose some questions. She may challenge me. Will I? She, or sometimes she just falls asleep. Hey, Blake, <laughs> thanks for getting on here, buddy. I appreciate you liking it. Depends on how much wine I've had. Kent, get us that. Hey, David's on here. David and Ginger, they're always hey, huge, David. huge. All right, well, hey, I'm going to get right into this. So I have broken some uh, topics down, and uh, some people are going to have their own input, baby. If you see some questions, please fire them at me, because I'm going to concentrate on the material, my own material that I came up with. I wrote this myself. And guys, we're counting on you for questions and input. Yeah, So because, hey, here's what I have found. If you'll comment, if you'll get involved in this, it will help you have more awareness to your own life. It will bring you into this. Be a part of this because I'm telling you, it will help you. It will make you, it will help you uh, uh, become more happy. Now, I didn't, I forgot to say this. Share the stream out. Share the stream out and me and Kathleen will go back and we'll pick one winner and you get a gift card from the Alley on Main. So, hey, the, <coughs> that's another reason to, to share it. The whole Contessa Drive Club is Woo! on. Thank you, Kathleen. I can't do it without you. we got to get that bourbon sold. Hey, Kathleen, if I were you tomorrow or tonight, reach out to our best friend, Derek Godwin, see if he wants some of that pappy. Okay, here we go. Number one, happiness is your job. 
It's your job. What I mean by that, it starts internally. So whenever, hey, my good buddy Tim Dutton's on here. Timmy. Timmy, thank you for getting on here, friend. So happiness is an internal job. That means that you can't depend on other people to come into your life. Oh, Blake might want some too. Sorry to interrupt. Send me a message, Blake, if you want some Pappy Van Winkle. You too, Tim Dutton. If I, if if you want some bourbon, send me a message because uh, David McWilliams can hook you up, I guess, on Pappy Van Winkle. So, um, happiness is your job as the individual. It's not, it's not somebody else's job. You cannot be dependent upon a friend, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a your kids. It member. is not anybody else's job to make you happy because it starts internally. And anything external, it's, it's, there's a good chance that it's, uh, I, Blake, uh, I think uh, it goes out to the highest bidder because that's what they're gonna they're gonna sell this. I just know it's very hard to get. So Kathleen, in my office, if you if you post on my wall, hook me up with that pappy. She will she'll reach back out to you, Blake. I don't know what it's gonna cost yet, but uh, her husband David is selling it. So I want to help David and Kathleen. So. Bootleggers, the bootlegger Nick Williams <laughs> over here. Hey, is FBI on here? <laughs> so, hey, here's something you got to ask yourself. How's your attitude? Your happiness, I believe it really begins with your attitude. If you got a bad attitude, more than likely you're not very happy. If you got a bad attitude, you're probably not going to have happy people around you. Mm -hmm. So, how's your attitude? And these are questions... That, that you've got to be talking to yourself about. Because you attract what you are and what you Like attracts like. Yes. Like attracts like. Always remember that. If you're walking around and your friends have bad attitudes, you need to ask yourself this. Do I have a bad attitude? Why are all my friends having bad attitudes? You <laughs> may fit in with some bad attitudes. So remember, how's your attitude? What are you telling yourself? What are the thoughts? Everything begins with a thought, friend. It's these little things. And like, I will get some thoughts that I don't want in there. Like if a thought comes into my mind, I erase it out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, let me get rid of that. You can dictate what thoughts stay in there, but thoughts will just pop up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my eraser out. I'm going to, if a thought comes in my head, I may just. Your filtration system. I'm erasing that thought. I'm not going to allow myself to think like that. I'm just going to, hey, Jessica Warner, thank you for getting on here, friend. So, some people, uh, their emotions will allow them to let those thoughts stay in there and then they feed those thoughts. Mm -hmm. They feed on negative energy, fear, all these things that'll make you scared. We, we manifest in what's in our, our head. LB's on here. How, how do Lee Barnes? That's exactly right. Those thoughts, they, they kind of filter down. And those thoughts, sooner or later, will become actions. And then... Everything, everything starts with your thoughts. So how are you going to control them thoughts? Here's something, luckily, that I've always, I don't know why, but I've been blessed with this. Is I've always believed, and I'm moving along here on my bullet points. The question is, do you believe better times are ahead? Do you think things can get better? Fortunately, even when times sucked, even when my life was a pure shit bag of a time, I still believe things were going to get better. I don't know why. I didn't have to tell myself that. But, <coughs> bless you, Brittany Renee. Sorry. Bless you. <laughs> You're allergic to me. So even when times were so bad in my life, I just knew better times were ahead. I had no doubt better times were coming. And that I think, I think luckily for me, that was just a God-given gift that I was born with, where I was telling myself, hey, today sucks, tomorrow may suck, but it ain't always going to suck. I didn't have to fight through that. So I was naturally wired to think that way. What are you, what are you telling yourself when times are down? The gut told you. 
Uh oh. Mama, I thought you weren't getting on here tonight. Hey, straight from the gut. Straight from the gut. Mama, I'm going to tell you something about your gut, though. Your gut will lie to you. Your gut will trick you. Your gut will lead you into, into places where you've been before. So if you're somebody like me that's been in a lot of, let's just say, I don't want to say bad places because I don't think I was in bad places. I was just in very mediocre places. So my gut would relive those mediocre places. So if I made a shift, my gut may bring me back to where I used to be. My gut could hold me back. So whenever you're going through a shift in your life, your gut, beer guts always tell the truth. <laughs> beer guts, that's, that's awesome, Jimmy Turner. And you know what? If you don't get back in the gym, you're going to have a beer gut. That's not your gut. That's your subconscious. Well, hey, Lee, what is your gut? What's the difference? Clear your... Amy, am I... Go... Am I... Is, that, is <laughs> that from the water boy? Oh, my God. I don't know what she's saying. I don't know what you're saying there, LB, but I still think your gut lies to you. I do think we have instincts. We have uh, awareness. Think with your head. Okay, well, what if what if you're thinking with your head, but what if you don't have enough knowledge to think with your head? That's why feeding yourself with knowledge. I read something today, pretty much 20% of what you learn becomes obsolete because the world evolves. So what you learn today in five years, it may not mean anything. It may be wrong. You've got to constantly, you've got to consciously, or Constantly. Constantly. Damn, that's a tricky word. <laughs> You've got to constantly re-educate yourself. You go, you know, you go forever through school, public education, whatever, public, private. But you've got to shift in later, later on in your life to where you're self-educating. Mm -hmm. Because everything you know today, there is a good chance that it will be wrong because the way the world evolves. New things come along is our brain. Lee, Lee, you're way too smart for me right now. I can't read that. You might tell me that, baby. But, hey, here's something else I'm going to move right along. So, whatever Lee's talking about, please tell me, baby. Please tell me. Right now? Well, no, I'll just make sure I, I understand what she's saying. Here is something that everybody probably needs to wake up with every single day, and they need to talk about. You need to wake up every day and practice some form of gratitude. I like that one. Gratitude. I like that. You've got to tell yourself. Uh, Jason said something. Will you read that? I, I can't. can't see what Jason said. Maybe it didn't yeah. pop up. It didn't. No. It's about Danila. I see you're on here, friend. I hope you lucky down. Lucky get down. Blair, thank you for getting on here, Blair. Did you tell Brittany Renee we had pizza today? Because she's already figured it out, and it had to be something in your camp. You're mad because you're slipping. Y'all, I'm just smarter than you think. So hey. What are you telling yourself? It needs to be good. Even when your life sucks. Even when you're not reaching what you feel like you should. Jason said it could all be worse. Blair, she knows. She knows by that picture. She caught me. Okay. She Sixth caught sense. She caught me. Her gut told her I was... She's listening to her gut. That's exactly right, Lee. She knew I was eating pizza today. Which, hey, was overrated. So... Let's, let's talk about the gratitude that uh, Ryan Denny's catching people. <laughs> I am easier to read than Dr. Six. Hey, but you Blair, Blair Dr. it Seuss. takes you 90 minutes to watch 60 minutes. All right, moving along. Do you practice gratitude? Do you wake up every single day and say something good? Yes. Because I believe your thoughts are leading indicators. Do you know what that means? If you start thinking this, mm -hmm. it begins with the thoughts, then then it's going to happen. You start your day off in the wrong foot, for sure. Some people do that over a bad dream they had. And it's have you ever done that? Yes. Do you, ever, do you ever get mad at me in dreams? I punched you in our sleep, remember? But people do that, and it's something that... What do you usually really What happen. are you usually dreaming about me being a ladies' man? Hey, model houses. My, my Come ladies. Come on over. Ladies, ladies man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving along, moving along. And please fire the questions. Please share the stream. I see you, Kathleen. You share the stream. You can get an alley on. You know what I might do? What? To get more shares. You can only share this one time. I may just start raising that ante up to get more people on here. What would it take to get people to share this? If I said, hey, one person wins $100, would that would somebody share? 
I'm sure. I may just like do that. I may do that. If you share it, I'm going to give away 100 bucks. Okay, number two. How committed are you to being happy? Because I, I really believe everything starts with the decision, and then it's your decision is either going to be, it's going to be backed up by the commitment that you show for it or the commitment that you don't. Hey, my hair. <laughs> Follicles on fleek. <laughs> <laughs> How committed are you to being happy? A thousand. I don't know if I can do a thousand, but I'm gonna. I think I may do. I may do a hundred dollars. May do a hundred bucks if the real estate board will let me. Even though this show has nothing to do with real estate, they still they still get on to me about things. How committed are you to being happy, Brittany Renee? I'm very committed with a capital C. Okay. Well, remember, it starts with making a decision. Then next step after the decision is how committed are you lucky lucky how committed, lucky, how committed are you how committed are you to being happy so commitment has commitment requires effort mm -hmm. Co commitment means time money resources back up what right. you decided to do it doesn't just happen it doesn't so just fall in your lap so whenever things don't go your way how quickly do you bounce back that's part of your attitude that's part of what you're telling yourself you had a little hiccup. Things didn't go your way. What you are you? You have a quick bounce back. Say what? You, oh, you've always told me I have a quick bounce back. I'm like a rubber band. You got to bounce back quick. If you can't bounce back, it's hard. It's hard to be happy. Because mm -hmm. some people, when they get punched, they're down. They're down on the count. They're down, I mean, they're down on the canvas. Some people can get punched. They fall down. They get right back up. But some, some people have got to work that muscle. Mm -hmm. Some people, it's not as natural. Things don't go their way. They hit a, or they hit a little speed bump. Right. Some of you keep going. Some people, their, their wagon just falls apart. For me, uh, for me, like in an airplane, if we hit a little turbulence, mm -hmm. I'm freaking out. For other people, it's nothing. What is happiness? Happiness is not an instant satisfaction. It's something that is longer lasting than that. Remember we were talking about that earlier because a lot of people get it misconstrued. They think it's, you know, happiness is instant gratification. Yeah, I think happiness is a, it's a place that you are. It's it's not a feeling. It's it's, it, it, it's a state. It's a state of of where you are. I'm not I'm not saying because I'm good uh Happiness is extremely healthy. Unhappiness is extremely unhealthy. So I do believe happiness is, <clears throat> I think it is a state of being. Yes, the being. However you want to, that would be a noun. Happiness is all, also requires action. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that have to go along with that. Okay, moving along in this little paragraph here, are th are you doing things that lead you to be in a better place? So that's what we were talking about a second ago, Jimmy Turner. You can't do things in the moment that are fun because they may lead to bad to an unhappy place down the road. Right. So you've got to be aware of what it is you're doing in the moment. Okay. Consequences can, I, yeah, you could do this and it can lead to bad consequences. Or you could just think, hey, if some people, hey, you go out, you're drinking, you're having a good night, and next thing you know, you got the blue lights on you, Ooh. it turns your life upside down right. for the next year, or 18 months. You had like months. a big meeting the next morning that was like a life changer and you missed it because of just a night out drinking. Yeah, out, out drinking. So, where was I? Are you doing? Are, yeah, are you doing things that lead to a better place? So let's look at it. Let's let's do this. Let's say, hey, right now I'm way too fat. DUI, you call Jimmy Turner. So let's take it right now, Jimmy. Me and you're way too fat. Let's just be honest. Me and Jimmy are With way. PH, we're AG. way too fat. What are the things that I'm doing that are getting me to a better health, to where I look better? Because hey, every day. I'm eating pizza. Okay, well, that's, today that was fun. It made me feel good whenever that pizza was, uh, whenever I saw the pizza, when I ordered it. Oh, I'm looking at it, I order it. That's fun. My emotions are leading me to think a certain way. Then I eat it, then I feel bad. Mm -hmm. So, hey, if you're doing things that make you, if you're doing the cotton candy lifestyle where you're doing something that 
feel or it tastes good in the moment, but it has no shelf life. If it if it only tastes good for a moment, it probably ain't gonna. There ain't much there. There ain't enough to make you happiness. Less short term, like short -term pleasure. pleasure leads to long term consequences. Well, it depends on what those pleasures are. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a quote, though. That's it, like a legitimate. It quote. is, but some of my pleasures may be uh, filling your brain with content. That's exactly right. For me, I what love. I love content. I love to learn. Mm -hmm. That's pleasure for me. Now, 10 years ago, my pleasure was not. My pleasure was going out drinking, chasing women, chasing that tail. and getting shot down more than likely. But hey, I was playing the game. I wouldn't play any very good, but <laughs> hey, we'll move along. Are you hanging around happy people? Surround yourself with happy. So, hey, you really are going to, you're going to find yourself really like in the average of the people that you're hanging around. Because you are what you attract. You like attracts like. We're going to keep going back. We're going to keep going back to that. Like does attract like. Are you hanging out with people that have their life together that are in a happy spot? Because Jimmy Turner, hey, our attorney on here, who's he's compliance, making sure that we're talking within uh, uh, the boundaries of straight from the gut. He asked, what is healthy? Or what is happy? And I believe it is a state of being. I believe it's somewhere that you put yourself. So uh, are you hanging around the right kind of people? Rebecca, you, uh, I sent you a card today. You'll be getting that Alley on Main gift card. Hey, sorry. Are we going there tomorrow? Yeah. I made a date with, uh, with Brittany Renee. That's one of the things. Hey, guys, let me tell you something. If you're, if you're near as selfish as I am, okay, you've got to be disciplined in a relationship. You've got to go ahead and make decisions that say, we're going to go do this, and then you follow up with them. Because I'm selfish, right? Mm -hmm. You can say it. It, doesn't, it don't hurt my feelings. I mean, it's obvious. I'm very selfish. And what I would, so in order for Brittany Renee to feel like she's getting what she should be getting out of this, I've got to be disciplined. I've got to do things that uh, I don't I don't get to think about it because if I start thinking about things, I get selfish. Well, baby, I mean, the alley is something we both enjoy. I know it's something, but I called you and said, hey, Friday night, I want to do something for you. Yeah. See, when was it on a Tuesday? That was on a Monday or Tuesday. That was earlier in the week. But hey, here's what would have happened if I did not make the, if I didn't make the energy or, or create the call to say this, if Friday night would have come around, I would, have, I would have waited on her to get home from work and laid around on the couch. Hey, baby, when you got home, I wouldn't have done anything. I'd have been selfish. Whenever I allow my emotions to make decisions, it's going to be very selfish. Mm -hmm. I hate that, but that's I'm an only child. I'm a lazy only child. That's something I, I so I've got to make, I've got to get out ahead of my emotions and make these plans before that. So, Moving right along, everybody. I appreciate everybody. This hey, Captain Juna Tony Woodall is on here, and it's a perfect time for you to get on here, Brother Woodall, because we're going to be talking about something that you taught me about happiness. Now, again, I always felt like I was blessed from God to be happy. I don't know why. I don't. I don't know why. But that's one thing that I've always had, even when I didn't have all the things that I wanted. I did have the gift that I was a happy person. So, moving along, number three, I do believe Matthew Rogers, hey, we got another attorney on here, man running Chattanooga, Tennessee area. Um, do you have a purpose? Are you trying to excel at anything? Write that one down. Is there anything in your life you're trying to excel at? Well, because normally when you feel you have a purpose, it's more fulfilling. Life is more fulfilling. Exactly. You have, to have a duty. If you are truly chasing greatness in some area in your life i believe you're more likely to be happy mm -hmm. if you are chasing greatness in some area of your life i believe you're probably going to be more happy so if you have not identified a purpose i think you need to start searching for that because i'm going to be honest with everybody on here all 22,000 people that are currently on this right now I didn't have a purpose until... Do you mean to tell you when I developed my purpose? Tell me. Do you know? Tell me. Well, I want you to guess. When you were... I'm 44 years old. You were... 
38. Uh -uh. <laughs> I wish I could have identified my purpose much younger in my life, but I didn't. Uh, I did not identify my purpose until I was about 42 years old. Whenever I decided I was going to build this image of Good Time Tommy, that's when I. That's when I established this is my purpose. I was trying to give you the benefit of the doubt, baby. Well, I appreciate that, but it was much later. So everybody watching this, if you're under the age of 42 years old where I was when I found my purpose, you're way ahead of me. I, did, I made the decision. Here's, here's what I did. You know, I don't know if anybody on here watched uh, 30 for 30 and Ric Flair last night. It was the night before. Well, I watched it. Watch it. Yeah, it was, it was, that's right. So Ric Flair is a wrestler, and he didn't really have an identity. So he's just looking at himself, and he found this wrestler from, well, he knew this wrestler from times before. His name was Buddy Rogers, and he wanted to emulate this guy named Buddy Rogers. That was his benchmark. That was his target. So what he did, the nature boy. So what he decided to do is, I'm going to be Buddy Rogers, and I'm going to blow my life up, and I'm going to become Ric Flair. So what I made the decision of doing after listening to Grant Cardone I was going to blow up this image of who I wanted to be. And in my mind, I knew it was Good Time Tommy. I did not know how to articulate it. I didn't know what it meant. But I knew I wanted to be Good Time Tommy. And I don't know how it happened. Then I started finding all these pieces to the puzzle. Lucky, you're embarrassing us. He's trying to get on the show. Well, okay, Lucky. Hey, does everybody want to see Lucky? Lucky. 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 He's trying to play. Oh, he's got his blue ball. All right, so we've got Lucky on there. Dusty Rose, the American Dream. So I decided I was going to I was gonna pursue a larger-than-life character, and it was going to be called Good Time Tommy. And everything that I do, <laughs> one time, next level swag. You're a cheerleader, Ryan? Ryan, were you? I didn't know you were a cheerleader, Ryan. Learn something new every day. <laughs> Luck of the top or bottom? So, um, hey, watch, watch the... The base or the top? Okay. You fly or you be base? Care, hey, you be careful over there now. I'd hate to... Oh, you I would hate for Jimmy Turner to kick you off the air. So, um, I decided I had a purpose. I was going to build this brand out. So, how many people in here have a purpose? Do you have a purpose right now, Brittany Renee? I what is it. What is your purpose? Um, well, I have many purposes. But you've got... Hats. You've got, what, what, what is the one thing that excites you, that just lights you up? Oh, the, well, the exchange, of The course. exchange, of course. He was a spectator. You were already good time, Tommy. You just owned, you just, I already owned the rights to good time, Tommy. I just didn't know what I had, brother, with all you're exactly, you're exactly right. Wow, that was tough. So everybody out there, you need to identify, the quicker you can get to your purpose in life, the quicker you can get yeah. there, I believe the happiness follows that. You know why you're here. You know what you're good at. You know how you can help other people. I know all this stuff. Man, this dog. Can everybody hear this dog? <laughs> okay, so moving right along, Lucky is interrupting us. Are you fit in the following areas? And my good buddy that's on here, <clears throat> Tony Woodall introduced this to me, and I did not put it the same way you did, Brother Woodall. But he talked about the seven streams of life. And he broke, he, well, I, I've got mine broken down because I don't remember. Tell ever, what were they? Well, he can put them on here, but uh, you've got to do these. You've got to look at the how, how, uh, how good is your life in the following areas. Now, everybody's going to talk about balance. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a big believer in the terminology of balance. Because I think like right now, for example, for you to get to the exchange to where you want it to go, you're going to have to have a lot more effort in getting the exchange there. It's like a baby. I you know, mean, that's exactly right. You got to get it to the walking stage. For me, a lot of my life is creating this brand. That's what I want to do. Now, what you've got to make sure that you're doing is you've got to make sure you've got, you've got at least some... You got like if you had a fuel tank on empty or full, you need to have some gas in every one of these little streams of your life. You can't have success in one area of your life and total failures in other areas of your life. So, how are you spiritually? 
I forgot. Uh, Woodall, I think, had like presents. He, I can't remember. Everything was a P. He'll probably put it on here. But it was a brilliant articulated message for me to see. So for me, if I'm going back through here, how is your life? How much fuel do you have in your spiritual tank? I feel like we saw something similar, and it was like a pie graph. Maybe it was. Right. Okay. Oh, good. He does. He's got yeah, the wheel. Got the... So look, Woodall's got it. Presence, purpose, people, prosperity, prosperity philanthropy, pleasure, 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 finish. So he's got these seven streams in your life. So if you were going to ask yourself, like presence, I think that really is spiritual. Maybe I think. Uh, how how much fuel do you have in your presence? In your, in your spiritual, Brother Woodall, if you want to put each one on here, outline it so we can talk about it. But how much fuel? If you're empty in some of these, you're very, very out of balance. Now, some people require more fuel in certain areas. Like for me, my purpose right now requires a lot of fuel. It requires a lot of fuel. Right. So, uh, relational. You know, I think that right there was people. That's what he, Brother Woodall was talking about. So the people in your life might be Brittany, Renee, Nicholas, my mom, my family, all these people. How Lucky. much, Lucky, the dog that's annoying, <laughs> how much How much effort am I putting into this little stream of my life? Uh, moving along to, uh, for me financially, how much am I paying attention to my finances? How, how, much, how much of your attention goes there? Um, health, how much of your attention is on health? I think for, for Brother Woodall, I don't okay, know. What about your health? Houston X. Well, my health is not, okay, my health is not where I want it to be. I'm gaining weight, I'm getting fat, I need to Photoshop the Facebook Lives. If somebody's got an app hey, where they can make me look a little skinny, I need to get out of the damn fat booth. Jason Wolpert said something. Please. I'm not sold on the whole one true calling. I think I'm actually a multi-potentialite. I don't want to be good at just one thing. I think you can be good at many things yeah. and it still be one true calling because there's many things that go into one. Good Tom Tommy's very broad. Yeah. So Jason, I think uh, if I'm saying it wrong, it's not because I'm saying what we're disagreeing. Maybe I just have not a good time, Tommy. What I'm trying to do, it does cover a lot of different areas, but it's like really, mine, you know, I mean, there's many different components. But but good time, Tommy, really to me symbolizes overcoming mediocrity. Tony That's, said, "Health is pleasure." Health is pleasure. So he's got this. You can probably, if anybody wants this, they can probably send a, a message to Brother Woodall and find out about all these streams, these little checklists about. So, uh, health is your pleasure. I think Tony should do a Facebook Live about I don't, I don't. I'm sure he probably has. And if you people don't know Tony Woodall, he is one of the best people at articulating life. Mm -hmm. If I had to just sum him up, he can articulate what you're going through, what you've been through. He can articulate why you feel the way you feel as good as anybody you'll ever be around. I can promise you that. One to one, he's amazing. And he was my coach. Whenever we're talking about how shitty my life was at 36, 37 years old, I had him riding shotgun with me everywhere because I wouldn't let that guy get out of my sight. He was helping me understand. He helped me build more awareness of what put me here, what's holding me back, why am I not moving forward? These are all questions you got to ask yourself. So how healthy, how healthy are you? For me right now, I'm not, I mean, I know we kind of got off topic, but I don't feel good when I've got a lie to my girlfriend about going to eat pizza and eating rolls and eating dark chocolate almonds. I don't feel good about that. <laughs> and then, then I'm gaining weight. I don't like the way I look. I don't like the, healthy this week. I mean, Brittany, uh, uh, Brittany does not know that I do this. I'm, I'm lying to her. So, um, with this, I'm not as happy because I feel a lot of anxiety, not because not because I'm letting you down, I am letting myself down, but my body doesn't feel normal whenever I'm eating like this. I get very jitterish. If Lee Barnes is on here, she could probably articulate why I feel like this. I have a lot of anxiety and it's very uncomfortable. Oh, she is on here. Well, uh, Yeah, in moderation, Lee. 
Lay okay. out. You I, can't I can, eat the whole tub. I'm eating sixty percent dark chocolate <laughs> covered almonds but how and almost many of all. Them? I mean, as many as I need <laughs> before I get lightheaded. I mean, it's just okay. So work. How on a scale from zero to ten? How's that work? How is your job? How good do you feel about it? Fat and happy. He said it's that not, not true. true. It's not it, true. It ain't, it ain't true. <laughs> They say that because typically when people get into a relationship, they get fat and happy because they're happy and so they eat, they're more comfortable. That is a great way to explain anxiety. Lee just said it. You're thinking too far ahead in the future equals anxiety. I wouldn't necessarily always agree though because sometimes I feel like a lot of people have anxiety attacks based upon their current situation. Not thinking not thinking ahead with the brighter future. For me, my anxiety is all, now that she says this, a lot of my anxiety is coming from something that I'm thinking ahead. Now, Tony Woodall's taught me so much about about the, the different levels that you live in. People live in the past, live with a lot of pain. People that live in the future, like Lee saying, live with a lot of fear. It's so hard, how many people can say, how many people can say they live in the present? Think about this. How often, sometimes if I go out, if we go out, I won't take my phone. Because if I take my phone, it's harder to live in the present. It's much harder to be present. So if you see people out to dinner or out somewhere socially, look at how many of them are on their phone. Like I'll see. We people watch. And we see oh, well, you the people watch. And the woman. I'll see people like on their Insta stories. I'm off Snapchat, by the way, now. So I only do Insta stories because the trend clearly shows that Instagram is outperforming Snapchat. So I just don't do Snapchat anymore. For me, it's uh -huh. just so. But I do see. Like, if I see some girls on there, like they're out in Vegas, and it'll show them they're doing their story, and if the camera goes around, it'll show their friends doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So there's like four girls sitting there doing the same thing mm -hmm. on their Insta stories. We were Gemini's, and we see the finish line first. I've learned to live here now and enjoy the the journal journey, and it helps me. It helps me. You know, what really hurts my anxiety the most is probably my health because of I've, I've got such a family history of, of heart problems um, and people dying at an early age. I think that really, really, it really affects my anxiety. What makes me feel, uh, the uh, another thing is flying. That scares the hell out of me. So uh, the other thing is fun. How much fun do you have? And I know some people that all they do is work and they don't know how to have fun. I know some people that have so much fun they don't have fun. I know some people that don't have a that they don't have enough going on in their life they can't have fun. So <laughs> I think I've gotten through all my notes. That's taken almost 40 minutes. Does anybody have anything else they would like to add? Do you have anything over there, Missy? Hmm. 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 So, okay. So if depression is past and anxiety is future, what is present? When people feel anxious because of their present situation. I don't know. For me, it's just I'm always worried about... Well, I'm just asking in general. I'm not asking specifically you. I'm well, asking because I know you think ahead. That's for I'm a lot of... About people that think and are like on medication for anxiety because they get themselves in such a situation well, some because people, of a present time. Peace. Like, what does that mean, Brother Woodall? He just said peace. I don't know if that's referring to what Brittany Renee was saying, but she's, she wants to know what about the people that are, are living in the moment, but they still have panic attacks. And so. they're not thinking about the good that could come out of, you know what I mean? Like they're just living in the moment and they're just, Freaking out, freak out mode. Because there are those people. I don't know. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they're, mm -hmm. they are. I don't. I don't know. But Brother Woodall could probably tell us because he's a doctor. Doctor Woodall. Doctor Woodall could tell us. Paging you, Doctor Woodall. But living in the present has always been one of my greatest challenges. 
So if you live in here and now and clear them, you have peace. I, I, I agree that we do live in our subconscious, which is, if you really think about it, our subconscious is somehow our past. Who else is typing? Brother, what all, what do you think about that? Some people, if they're living in the here and the now, they still have moments where they just totally freak out. I don't know what that is. But you know... I really do think a problem our country is going to have is how many people are medicating themselves. Because you go to a doctor, they want to prescribe medicine. Let's force this medicine. And there's going to be, over time, there's going to be a lot of problems because we weren't made to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we weren't, there's going to be repercussions of people living to 130, 140, 150 years old because we're manufacturing this. We're making this. So the more of these, these synthetic things you put in your body, I believe we're going to have a lot of problems. You've got to find, you've got to find ways to overcome this stuff. Whenever, I know this, whenever I eat clean, whenever I exercise, whenever my weight is where it's supposed to be, hey, like those pictures you've seen before, Brittany Renee. Oh, a few months ago. A few months ago. This is how I used to look. <laughs> whenever I'm, so whenever my mm -hmm. health, and my, uh, when it really, my health leads to the majority of my anxiety. That's, that's the one thing I really struggle with the most. So, hey, my throat, my voice is about to go away. I'm, uh, I'm really, really struggling to talk. I'll start coughing here in a second. So, Did you get the new snacks, baby. I already took the new snacks. Oh. Any, Blake Finney, what's shaking, friend? Blake Finney's been in that gym. But we're about to shut it down. Hey, we got a big football game this week, don't we? Mm. Which game? Don't remind me. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame, Miami. That's 7 o'clock. You know, those games going on so late, it'll be past my bedtime, but I'll stay up for that game. So, guys, hey, I've been going about 45 minutes. I'm about I'm about out. Every Thursday night, 8 o'clock, me and Brittany Renee, we come here. We're going to talk about life. That's really what Straight from the Gut is all about. It's talking about life. I'm talking about exercise equals endorphins. You know, like when I run, I feel so much better. Like, when hey, this. When you start your day out. Good day, Mama. With a workout. Yep. Your day, it, I mean, it's just. Your day is. Different. A, yes, because of endorphins. But also, I think it gives a boost to your confidence. You come out and you've already had a win in the morning. You've worked out. You feel better. Titans versus the Bengals. <laughs> I love you, Mama. But, uh, Hi, Mama. yeah, every morning, that's one thing I do every morning. What time do I wake up, Brittany Renee? 4.59. 4.59 every day. Wake up because I like the idea of saying I wake up with a four on my clock. It makes me feel better about me. It helps my confidence. Mm -hmm. Makes me happy knowing I'm getting up at four or something. <clears throat> but I will be back here for breakfast tomorrow because my place, the Sylvan Park Grill, Sylvan Park Maybe Diner. Well, I have to do something. Got ran through. Somebody ran through it with a car. Can you believe that mess? Mm -hmm. All right, guys, unless there's anything else, if you shared the stream, we will go back in there tomorrow. Kathleen and I will pick a one winner. Maybe $100? I don't know. Depends on how many shares I had. Yeah, eight, if, I think. Well, if we only had eight 18. shares. 18. Depends on how many people <laughs> shared it multiple times. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to surprise people. But share the stream. You're going to get something if you're the winner. But we're about to shut this bad boy down. It is almost 9 o'clock. We go to bed. Everybody, we really, really appreciate you getting on here. We appreciate the comments. We appreciate... Mama, if you shared that again, it don't help. You know, sharing it multiple times. She's going to get 200 because you shared it twice. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, we're going to go to bed every Thursday night, 8 o'clock. Please come. That's nuts. Good. Hey, I do. Every, that's Hey, on the weekends, I can't sleep in. I can't. I, I mean, it's hard for There's me. There's times where we slept in, well, we've laid around <laughs> until about 8. There have been, like on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Skipping church. Hey, I overslept. Sinners. I think, uh, have a good night, guys. I do think, so I read this, that uh, it's good for your body to get like a 10-hour 
10 hours of sleep. Michael Burke's getting on here at the tail end of this, Coach Burke. Uh, <laughs> when we're shutting this thing down. Hey, Rabbit. <laughs> Rabbit's getting on here. <laughs> but I think it's good for you to get a one 10-hour night sleep in a week, in a given month. That's all it takes is one? I think you need to get one. And also, the normal with, is eight, right? Yeah, but I think it's good for your body to get one 10-hour. Coach Bird, are you in town? Are we doing breakfast? Oh, he's liking. He's liking. Are you going to be in town Saturday for breakfast, Coach? Go rabbit! Hey, we're about. Are we staying in Mandalay Bay? We need to. We need to. Is that where we're gonna stay? Mm -hmm. We need to go ahead and book our room. Better late than never. Hey, I thought we were it's, staying in the same room. I don't. Natalie said something about yeah. getting a room together. Well, we need to do that. I shared only once. Thank you, Mama. Hey, I'm about to date with my daughter. So, hey, last Saturday he brought his daughter. Well, honey, he's on the road a lot. He is on the road. He took her. He brought a. He's got to give we Ella Grace some. Love. He brought Ella. Oh, our room is already booked. We okay. Paying for it. Okay. All right, kids. Hey, we're getting off here. It's bedtime for me, but every Thursday night, 8 o'clock, we do this. We talk in life on Straight from the Gut. I wish I would have done X before now is really the premise of the show. So thank you so much, guys. We're signing off. Night.